And in an interest in starting close to on time, I'm going to start us off with a fun little exercise. Is that okay? Can we do something fun to start off? All right. You, I issue you one challenge at the start of this meeting today. That is to learn someone's name that's sitting close to you that you don't know. Okay? Each person in here, a name that you didn't know 30 seconds ago. You must find someone around you and introduce yourself and get their name for anyone that's close to you. Okay? Ready? Go. Must be someone you don't know. Looks like everybody's pretty much gotten that. So now, now for the accountability portion. Raise your hand if you actually learned someone's name. Raise your hand. I, oh, I have to keep my hand down. I didn't learn anybody's name. I did bad. Anybody? Oh, the back of the group did not do very well. Okay, good. Bonnie, Sharon, Kim, thank you. Thank you very much for learning someone's name. Good job. All right. Well, there is a, a method to my madness. <laughs> We, we're going to do this about 125 times in about a month from now. There are going to be a lot of people who are coming to this event who we're not going to know their names, that we're going to need to learn them. Um, the good news is, is about the event itself, they will have name tags on. So that'll be a good thing. Uh, volunteers necessarily won't have name tags, but all of our guests will have name tags on. But we're going to have to do that about 125 times, depending upon what your job will be that night. So I wanted to get you into the habit of asking for names or at least running up to people. Even if you're an introverted person, I understand how that goes. It's good to, to learn and grow and new, learn something new about people. So welcome. Thank, first of all, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for volunteering your time and your energy and your effort uh, into an event that is absolutely my favorite day of the year. Sorry, Christmas and Honey, you're on our anniversary. February 9th is my favorite day of the year because it is just such an amazing event. It is the best time that I've ever had in ministry. I can't say my whole life, but in doing this, this is my favorite event of the whole night. So what we do, how to put it into words, what we do. We, our goal is to be the love of Jesus Christ to a bunch of people who don't normally get that. Um, we do that by throwing a prom, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, there's a lot of things that we do that night. There's so many different opportunities to have fun for a wide variety of people who are coming to the event. Um, and it's our goal for every single one of us, no matter what you do, is to make sure that our guests are having a good time. So whether if you're on the, the paparazzi team, it's your job to make them blush and feel like they are the most important person in the whole world. If you're on uh, the... The team that is even just doing registration, that's not a little thing by any means, but if you, I mean, you need to let them know that they are special the moment they walk in that front door. If you're out in the parking lot, you need to make sure nobody gets hurt because you're not going to have fun if, you're getting, if somebody's getting hurt. Uh, so we've got lots of different jobs for people to do because this is a huge night. Um, and if you're a buddy, your job is one-on-one -on -one with your guests that you're there with to make sure that they have the best time of their life for the whole night long, and that's pretty much it. We'll get into more particulars, I promise, uh, as we go on with the night, but that's really really the goal there is, is to do that, is to be the love of Jesus, to show the love of God to a bunch of people who might not really know it. They might not know it in any way. So um, we have a lot of people. I'm not going to get too much into this, but do me a favor. Stand up if you're on our planning team, GFF team members. Stand up if you're on our planning team. Thank you, Kim, for being the first one. All right, thank you. This is our GFF planning team. If you have any questions, feel free to ask questions to the people that just stood up. They will also be the ones in charge of the different teams. At the end of this session, uh, in about an hour, we're going to break up into the different teams based upon what job you want to do individually, and you will report to them. I'll introduce them later when we get to the different jobs, but that's what we're going to be doing throughout the night. So... 
All right, next we have a word from the man himself. No, not Jesus, but Tim Tebow. Uh, he has got a video for us. Jeff, whenever you get a chance, let's roll that video. Night to Shine team, what's up guys? This is Tim Tebow, and I just want to say thank you so much for being part of the team. Honestly, four years ago when my executive director came to me and he said, hey, we heard about this problem that this church has for people with special needs. What would you think about doing one? And I just fell in love with it. And I said, let's do it. And he said, where? And I said, let's do it everywhere. So that first year we freaked out, we rallied at the last second. We got 44 churches to be part of it. And I thought, this is so amazing. Like this is as big as it could possibly get. But then we realized that we serve a really big God and he started to open up doors and the next year we had 201 churches and we continued to grow and grow and this year, guys, over 500 churches from over 16 countries, 175,000 volunteers are rallying together to celebrate over 90,000 kings and queens of the power. And honestly, it's because of you. It's because you're willing to say, yes, I wanna be part of that team. I wanna give, I wanna care. I want to love those kids. I want to celebrate with them. I want to dance with them. I want to let them have the night of their life. And honestly, it's not just the night of their life where they get to dance and they get to have fun and they get to ride limos, they get to walk down red carpets. It's so much more than life because maybe for the first time, they realize that they're worth it. They realize that they're special. They realize that they're loved. There's not much more important than that. And honestly, we couldn't do it without you. Without you saying, yes, I'm going to be part of it. I'm going to love those kids. I'm going to make them feel special. And at the end of the night, when they're crowned king or queen of the prom, hopefully they leave realizing that the God of this universe loves them so much and has a special, unique plan and purpose for their life. And we get to show that with how much we love them. Guys, thank you so much for being part of A Night to Shine. It's my favorite night of the year. And it's a night that's going to change so many lives. God bless you. Yeah. So let me take a second to echo that. Thank you again for being here. We could not do this without each and every one of you. Um, the other thing is, I know we had some winter weather apparently yesterday, uh, which is causing some issues for some people to be here today. That's why we changed the time. It was supposed to be 9 a.m. this morning, but I was very fairly certain that they would not plow the roads by 9 a.m. this morning. So we moved it to this afternoon. Thank you for your flexibility. Uh, so step two of this is we always need more volunteers. So if you know somebody that might be interested in doing this in your circle of friends or church group or Heck, if you, anybody here in town, this is a community-wide event. It's not just a church-wide event. It's a community-wide event. So if you know of anybody that would like to do this, we're taping this session right now, um, and they can watch the, tape, the training and email me. I'll give you my email address before the end of the night. Uh, and all they have to do is email me and say, I want to I uh, volunteer. I want to be a part of this night. Uh, and they watch the training and tell me what team they're going to be a part of. And as long as there's room for it, we'll, we'll invite people to be a part of that. So... Uh, if you know anybody else, that'd be fantastic. So let me start start uh, with a word of prayer. If you would be so kind, let's bow our heads and, and give, this, uh, give this night up to our Lord. Father, we thank you for each person here today that's willing to give some of their time on a snowy Saturday and on a cold Friday night in February uh, to, to make someone know how much you love them. Uh, it's hopefully to make 125 guests know how much, God, that you love them. So we thank you for their willingness to volunteer, their, uh, their hearts, their love for, for a people who don't necessarily always get that. So Lord, give us the strength we need. Uh, help us to get up, to move, to give us the strength to dance. Give us the strength to have fun uh, and have the energy to make it through four hours of the night, Lord. Uh, and then I promise you they can, they can just crash afterwards. So we thank you so much for all you do for us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So next we're going to go over kind of the flow of the evening, how Friday night is going to look. Um, so this again, Friday, February 9th. Um, and as we do this going forward, it's always going to be the Friday before Valentine's Day. That's Tim Tebow loves that day. 
This is going to be an annual thing, hopefully, for us, as long as we keep getting approved to, for them to give us money to pay for it. We're going to keep doing this going forward, so it's always the Friday before. So the schedule's going to go a little bit like this. Volunteers were asking to arrive uh, between 4.30 and 5, 5 o'clock at the absolute latest to be there, especially if you are a buddy. Um, if you decide to be a part of like the cleanup team at the end of the night, this doesn't apply to you. But anybody else, we're really hoping to be there uh, between 4.30 and 5 p.m. We open the doors at 5, even though we don't tell our guests we open them until 5.30. Some of them do get there early, so we open the doors at 5 o'clock. Uh, and that's when the registration process will take place. The guests will check their coat. Uh, inside they have a diamonds is wonderful if you don't know this we're doing this at diamond event center uh, on Pearl Road just south of 303 here in Brunswick across from Edwards Middle School and Byzantiner Middle School um, diamond event centers back there it's it butts up against uh, Dick Hoover bowling alley if you know where any of those are if you don't know where that is come find me afterwards and I'll tell you where to go um, so between 5 and 6 15 this is where we do most of the the introductory uh, stuff so as soon as the guest walks in the front door there will be a registration table right there waiting for them uh, they will get their name tag they will get what their number is each one of our guests will be numbered one through 125 not because it's impersonal but because it's easier when we do photographs at the end of the night to just say hey this is photograph number 67 this is photograph number 88 and make sure that the each person gets their correct photograph uh, at the end of the night um, then they will we're gonna have like a black Cart, not carpet, what's the word I'm looking for? Tarp? No, curtain kind of a thing, like a black curtain um, walling off in between the coat check and their red carpet entrance. So one of my favorite things for the whole night is after they've checked their coat and they've registered and they actually get a, a few seconds to settle in, they're going to go through this big black, I just lost the word again, curtain, excuse me, and we are going to have a team of smiling faces yelling and screaming making them feel like they're a celebrity going down the red carpet for a movie premiere, all right? That's the goal, is to make the guests feel like they are so special. So we're gonna have, um, if you have any energy inside of you, the paparazzi team is a great team for you to be on uh, because it's your job to, to smile and make them feel wonderful as they come inside the door uh, and just yell and scream and make a big deal about their entrance. Uh, once they go in the red carpet, they will meet up with their buddy um, so buddies will be inside the main room. I actually found a floor plan for Diamond Event Center, so we're going to go over where everybody's going to stand a little bit later once we get into that. But just know that when they go in, they're going to get matched up with their buddy. They're going to go have their professional pictures taken. Once they have their professional picture taken, they can do any host of things such as get their hair done, makeup touch up. Um, guys can get their shoes shine. There's going to be karaoke available. You can hang out and talk. There's a lot of different things. There's a photo booth that they can go do. Um, so that'll be, so if you get someone who's there early, you may have to fill the time with something fun for a while uh, until we get into the night. So that gets us up to 6.15. Jeff, go ahead and flip that for me. 6.15 to 7 is when we have dinner for the guests and the buddies together. So the guests and the buddies will be eating uh, from 6.15 to 7.00. We will need some people, we did last year, I'm assuming we'll need it again, some people from some of the early teams, so like the registration team, the paparazzi team, something like that, to, just to serve meals. Uh, the more that we have, like 10 to 12, maybe 15 at the most, the more people we have, the quicker we can get the food out to everyone. Um, if you're a buddy, you cannot do that because you'll be sitting there with your guest uh, getting ready to eat. From 7 to 7.45 is the apex of the evening it's the what we've all gotten there for it's the crowning ceremony so every single guest that will be there uh, we will have tiaras and crowns to crown them the individual king and queen of the prom that they're there and it, let me tell you that is the most special moment that we're there uh, tim tebow has another wonderful video where he tells them how much god loves each and every one of our guests uh, and then announces to them that they are the king and queen of the prom uh, the buddies will be placing either the crown or the tiara onto their guest's head, and everybody will be there for that point, all every volunteer, going nuts, crying, screaming, yelling, having a great time, uh, letting them know again how special they are, cheering for them, 
and the buddy will do that. Now, if you were there last year, this is where we're a little bit different from where we were last year. Last year, we had everybody come up and we announced them one by one and had them walk the red carpet again. Yeah, that took forever. Uh, so we're not doing that again this year. Um, we're just going to do it all at one time. It's going to be very individual at your tables. Uh, so buddies, you're going to have to pay attention to what's going on, follow what's going on. The, the crown or tiara will be there at your table and you can crown or your guest uh, at that time, but we will not be calling everybody up individually. We are going to announce them as they come in in the very beginning of the dance, so they still receive that treatment, but not at that time, so it will we'll save some time for there. All right, one more slide, I think, because we still got more time. So the rest of the night, we're there until 9.30 or they kick us out, which might be a little bit later than that, um, is a free time where the guests can choose what to do. They can dance. We'll have a, we have a professional DJ there uh, playing wonderful dance music. We have some people here at the church who have volunteered to lead us in a line dance to get it all kicked off, right? Where's our refit crew? Where are you at? Yes. Thank you, refit ladies. It's going to be awesome. Have you ever been to a wedding where they start playing music and nobody goes and dances? Yeah, we don't want that at our prom. So we're going to have them go and kick it off. It's going to be high energy. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so they, and there will be guests who will literally dance the entire hour and 45 minutes and not want to get off the dance floor at 930. I don't know where they get the energy. I couldn't do it for an hour and 45 minutes, but they will want to do that. Others will want to move around. So we will have the opportunity to ride in a limo, hopefully. Uh, we haven't gotten them, but I'm pretty sure we will. Last year we had two, so that's awesome. You can get a variety of different things. Um, have fun in the photo booth again, or just sit and relax. If you uh, are with someone, we will have a, a smaller area than last year, but still an area for people with sensory issues. So if the lights or the strobe lights or the sound gets to be too much for them, we have an area where they can go and just relax and kind of calm down. That's adjacent to the big dance floor, so it's not like you have to walk very far. Um, so that's what's going to be the schedule at, in the in Diamond Event Center throughout the night. One thing I haven't mentioned that's also a great big part of this is that right next door is Faith Walk Church, uh, and they uh, have offered their entire facility to us to pamper and be there for the caregivers of all of these people that are, are there um, enjoying the dance. So they are more than welcome if they're a caregiver they're or family member or father or mother, they're going to drop their child off at the dance when they're going to meet up with their buddy and they get to go over to what we call the respite room and be pampered for throughout the entire night. So that's another side to this that we need a group of volunteers as well as a team to sign up for for that. Uh, that's called the caregiver team that we are pampering the, the members of that. Let's see, last year we had people there uh, doing uh, audio and visual performances to give them something to do. There were people there that were giving massages. There were people there that are just, I mean, there were gift baskets. The community goes all out for this. Uh, and we are so grateful because we could not do this without the support of everybody else. So that's going on there as well. If, as you as a volunteer, as you saw earlier, the buddies are going to be eating during that time from 6.15 to 7.00. Everyone else on the other teams, we will have a schedule to where you will go next door and eat in the respite room at some point throughout the night. Uh, last year, everybody kind of went at once, and they were a tiny bit overwhelmed at that small section. Sharon, you're wonderful because you didn't show it, but you were overwhelmed, I could tell. Uh, so we're going to try to space it out a little bit this year and have a schedule so you and your team will go over and eat in probably chunks of a half. Like half your team will go at one time and half your team will go at another so that everyone gets a chance to eat. So I just wanted that, all that to be said, you will get fed on this night <laughs> for supper. Uh, so don't worry if you're going to be there from 4.30 to 9.30 that you're not going to eat. So that was being said. All right, that is the flow of the evening. Um, I will be going over exactly the, the job list of things that you can do throughout the night in just a little bit. Um, but again, our goal in all of this, um, this, this night is not for me. It's not for our planning team. It is not for anyone else. It is for our guests. And again, our only goal throughout the whole night is to let the light of Jesus shine onto our guests over and over and over again. So they, they cannot leave and say, oh man, I didn't feel special tonight. That's the, that would be the worst case scenario for us, is if a guest would leave and say, I didn't feel special tonight. So uh, that's some of what's going on. Any quick questions before I go on? I know this is crazy to open it up at this time, but that's why you don't stop in a sermon and let people ask questions. Just kidding. Yes, Jim. Absolutely. 
And that is another goal for each and every one of you is to pray every day from now until February 9th that it's like Thursday and not like yesterday. Amen. Gotta love Ohio weather. All right. Thank you, Jim. Yes, that's a great reminder. Okay. How am I doing on time? Oh, I'm ahead of time. I'm never ahead of time. All right. I want to spend a little bit of time um, going over last year or even and anytime anyone comes to GFF on Thursday night, I always have the question asked to us, well, how are we supposed to act around people with special needs? And that's a wonderful question. Don't, it's, don't judge anyone that asks that question because it's a good question. Um, not, not, if you haven't spent a lot of time around people with special needs, you need to know. It's okay to, to act like a normal human being, but not to necessarily expect normal results back to you. Um, most of the people that come to GFF are, uh, they are adults in their physical nature, but their mental capacity is, is a little younger. It's not quite yet to adult level. Not everyone's going to be that way. We have wonderful people who are, are wonderfully developed and mentally, and some that are not so much. Uh, and so it's a wide variety. Um, our goal is we're going to match up each buddy individually with a person so that you can talk to them ahead of time. You can find out what their special needs are from their caregivers, so you don't have to have just a broad spectrum understanding. You can actually do some research, you can ask us some questions. So what do I do if my buddy or my guest has autism? What do I do if my guest has a physical disability? What do I do? Those are great questions. I wish I could answer every single one of them for you right now. But once we match you up one-on-one -on -one with someone, you can do a little bit more research individually uh, and find out, but I'm gonna try to overview a little bit. So I've got a video. I'm, I'm such a cornball that I liked this video. It's a tad bit corny myself, so, but we're going to show it. It's very short, but it has a really good principle. So don't get caught up in the corniness of the video. It's, it's almost like, have you ever had sensitivity training at work? Did you ever have to do that? Isn't that awesome and awful all at the same time? Well, that's kind of how this video is too. Um, it's going to give you some good tips. So try to focus on the information and not the stupidity, if you will, of the video. Jeff, whenever you get a chance, if that is that there, we have a second one. All right. Good morning, Bob. Good morning there, big man. Morning, Alice. There's no need to be awkward. Poor Bob. Like so many of us, he just doesn't know how to interact with people with disabilities. It's pretty easy, really. People with disabilities are people first. We need the same things that every person needs, like respect. Good morning, everyone. Attention! Uh, okay. Maybe we need to be more specific. The easiest way to show respect is to focus on the person, not the disability. It's okay. You'll get the hang of it. One easy way to focus on the person is to watch the person signing and not their interpreter. Or their companion. It's really cool that you'd like to help, but do us both a favor and please ask me first. What you think might be helping? I got you. Wait, wait, ah! Oh no, might actually not. If you'd like to offer me help, let me hold on to your elbow. Don't take mine. Hey, would you like to take mine? Sure. Assistive devices help us to live our lives. They're really important and really personal. Grabbing them only makes it weird for everyone. What? Please only touch our devices and service animals if we've given you permission. And don't take it personally if I ask you not to. Remember that my service animal helps me all the time. Neither of us would like it if we were separated. Remember, we make our own decisions. We sign documents, vote, volunteer, work, and pay taxes. We get married. So don't address me just because I have a great smile. Just because I'm blind does not mean I'm deaf. Just because I'm deaf doesn't mean I'm blind. 
And just because I use a wheelchair doesn't mean that I can't sweep you off your feet. So take a deep breath, relax. We don't bite. Well, that's we're really hungry. Hello, lady, how are you? Hello. And if you're not sure what to do, just ask. Hi, would you still like to see a menu? Uh, no thanks, but can you please read it to me? Sure, definitely. Just treat us the way you would want to be treated, and we'll all be okay. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, Alice. Morning. Awkward no more. Nice job, Bob. Go forth and be human. <laughs> There's no need to be awkward. It's going to be my new theme music. There's no need to be awkward. Okay. So uh, we're going to get to that in a second, though, and we'll, we'll get to that. That's what the inside of Diamond Event Center looks like, so we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. But uh, So there was some really good stuff in that video. I hope you weren't too distracted by the silliness, although I love the silliness, so that's good things. But honestly, there's, there's nothing wrong with asking. Uh, you could do it, A, either before the prom, or we will get you the contact information for the caregiver if you're a buddy being one-on-one -on -one with a guest. You can call them, interact with them, and ask questions. Um, that's a great way to get a little bit more information beforehand. Um, if you're on any one of the other specialty teams and what you're doing, I I'd like the advice at the end, go forth and be human. Just <laughs> let go of your fear, let go of any awkwardness that might be there when you're interacting with someone with special needs. They are people just the same and they, they love to do fairly much the same as, as everyone else. Um, so. That's, that's a great way. Uh, buddies, we're going to have a little bit more specific training when we get to our breakout session here together. So, and if you have more questions, you can ask me. But I, I wanted to give that as a little bit of a brief overview uh, of what we're doing. So just act like you normally would around most people, uh, but realize that their responses may be in not as a, an appropriate adult response back to you. Um, so you may get the same question over and over and over and over and over again the whole night long, and that's okay. Uh, you may have somebody who might not necessarily want to talk to you the whole night and that's okay too they might not want to be chatty and interact they might just want to uh, have some fun a lot of our guests will have um, significant others that are there as well uh, they're boyfriends and girlfriends so you want to make it a, a group effort for them uh, if you're paired with someone who does have a boyfriend they're not trying to forget about you or ignore you throughout the night you, you want to make it more of a group interaction time um, because they're there for themselves, but also there for their dates. So, um, like I said, buddies, we're going to get a little bit more into specifics when we get there, um, but that was what we're doing. So, all right. How do we make, is there a way? Okay, I'm looking, there we go. A bottom left-hand corner is the door. You'll see a little rug. This is the Diamond Event Center up in front of you. All right. Everyone will enter in in that bottom left-hand corner where there's a little dark splotch that looks like a rug. Uh, and then directly to the right of that, you'll see a little cubby hole where they have a beautiful fireplace that's a really cool place to sit. Unfortunately, we're going to use that for our part of our registration area as we walk in the door, okay? So uh, let me go through a virtual moment for one of our guests coming through. They are going to walk in the front door. Well, first they're gonna be met by our wonderful security and parking lot team outside, helped out of their car and walked to the front door. The great thing about Diamonds is it has an overhang uh, where people can come and drop off their guests. Um, some may need your help to get into the door, some may not. You can ask, you can uh, be there to help. Um, that team is, is wonderful. They're our first responders. They're the first people that get to be seen. Uh, as soon as our guests enter in the front door, uh, they will meet, be greeted by the registration table there. Not all of the registration team will be right there. Uh, you'll go over that in your breakout session, but there will be some people there. Um, and then, so what will be happening? The buddies will be inside in the wooded area. That's the dance floor. Uh, the buddies will all be in there patiently waiting for their guests to arrive. Uh, and when your guests arrive at the front door, we will have either walkie-talkies or maybe just text back and forth uh, between someone inside the main building and someone out at the registration table to let us know guest number 42 has arrived. We'll look on our sheet. Someone, one person will have a microphone and they'll be calling out, Joe Smith, I need you to come here. Your, buddy, your guest has arrived. So it gives you a few minutes to gather yourself together, be all excited for your buddy or for your guest to arrive. 
Um, right about where that room is in the middle on the bottom is where that curtain is going to be. It'll be drawn, so they will have the opportunity to check their coats. They will have the opportunity to go to the restroom if they have to beforehand. Uh, so the restrooms will be before the curtain, coat check will be before the curtain, registration will be before the curtain. Once they go through the giant black curtain is when all chaos breaks loose. Uh, and the paparazzi team is there, the photography team is there, just having a blast, yelling, screaming, making people feel like they are uh, one of a kind as they walk through the rest of that section of the hallway. Um, then the guests themselves will turn in to the left. Uh, you see the little red dot? That will be where the, that's another door there, and that will be where another section of the registration group will be. They will make sure they know what table the guest and the buddy are sitting at. That buddy, that's going to be up to you to know which table you're sitting at, not necessarily the guest. Uh, and then you can go in there, you can set your stuff on the table, and you'll go across the dance floor to where the upper left-hand corner is where the professional photographer will be. Um, you're going to have to take a second to get used to it. I just thought this was cool that they had this on their website. Um, going straight ahead, you'll see kind of like pews kind of lined up like a church on the bottom right hand corner that is where the sensory room is going to be and we're going to borrow some of that space because it's a really big space um, and have the beauty team be in there so that's the hair and makeup team as well as the shoe shine team are going to be in that room um, because we didn't have too many people take advantage of the sensory room last year so i don't think we need as much space as we set aside for it so they're going to be in that section they're ready to help the guests if, if you're in that section um, I think that's pretty much it. You'll see the DJ is at the very top of where the dance floor will be. At the very bottom is where you can go to get drinks. There's also another um, non-alcoholic drinks, by the way. I just, I don't know why I have to say it, but I have to say it. Uh, that will, This is a non-alcohol-free night, or wait, alcohol-free night, sorry. Not too many negatives, <laughs> too many negatives. Uh, whew. Okay, elders, please don't fire me over that one. All right. Uh, there's, so there's two places where you can go get drinks, the far upper right-hand corner and then uh, right smack dab in the middle just beneath the dance floor will be the two places to go uh, to get yourself some refreshments. They have pop, they have coffee, they have water uh, for all of our guests as well in there. Uh, so the tables are laid out. They won't exactly be laid out like this. This was someone's wedding. I don't know who it was. So we will not have the two tables at the very end, which are, were used, I assume, for the head table and for the buffet line for whatever wedding this was. Um, on the far left is where we will play the video uh, for Tim Tebow telling everyone that they're the kings and the queens of the prom uh, so we can make sure everyone sees that before the end of the night as well. Um, everything else, well, not everything else. The limo rides will be, of course, outside. So when we get to that point where people want to go and ride the limo, you will go back out the front door and be there for that limo ride. The photo booth will probably be up somewhere in the upper left-hand corner that way um, when you're looking at this diagram as well. Any questions about the layout of Diamond Event Center before we move on? I'm going to be done early, folks. Come on, this is crazy. You, if you go to this church, you know you're very rarely do we, are we done early. So, Terry, thank you. Yes, the, the professional photographers will be there, hopefully with two printers this year instead of just one, because we all were waiting for that. Um, so the, where we have the table right inside the front door for registration, uh, after registration is done, we're going to flip that over. They all get gift bags going home at the end of the night. A part of their professional fo photograph will be in there. They get a little mug uh, from us. They get a little thing from Tim Tebow. That will be where they go at the end of the night uh, to receive all of that on the way out the door as well. Is that what you were asking? Or Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. That will be uh, where it was last year, which is inside the door, kind of by the red dot. Um, that's where they will be. Yes. Uh, so the Tim Tebow Foundation is fantastic. They, but they also want a lot from us. They give us money, and they expect a lot from us in return. I think that's fair. Um, so uh, Terry's in charge of the photography team. There, there will be people on the paparazzi team. You're not actually taking pictures. You're just being wonderful and maybe even snapping flashes or using your phone um, but you don't necessarily have to take all those pictures and keep them um, but the photography team are a set few group of people who are wandering throughout the whole night taking pictures of everything last year we had uh, five gigabytes of photo photographs and 30 gigabytes of video 
that we had to send to the Tim Tebow Foundation the very next day. Uh, and since my internet didn't like it, I was able to mail them a flash drive. But uh, other than that, yeah. So the photographers, when you're taking your pictures and if you run out of space on your little card, you can run over to Brian Coyne and Pastor John from the uh, Valley City Wesleyan Church will be there um, and they will take your card, they will wipe it, put the, put the video or photographs on a specific, another flat hard drive and then give that back to you so you can go back and do in that. Yeah, but that'll be about where that main door is, probably just to the right of that other main door where the red dot is uh, on the diagram ahead. Yeah, you see? Yeah. It's going to be half and half. You're going to be about halfway down the hallway. Okay. It's behind the curtain. There will be people taking pictures, and that's where the red carpet will be. And then also as they enter in the main door into the big facility, you'll have people in both places. Good question. That's good. All right. Anybody else? Yeah, Kim, go ahead first. I did not. Thank you very much. The restrooms are, uh, if you're looking at the diagram, they're on the bottom. You can't really see them very well on this one. Uh, that, there's a little box on the very bottom. That's the office for the, uh, for the facility. That's Diamond Event Center's office. One is on the right of it. One is on the left of it. There's a men and, and a women's restroom. Yeah, Michelle. <coughs> oh, am I really? <laughs> kind of. Okay, yeah, left and right is opposite. So, yeah, right in the middle. Let me just get up. I sit too much anyway. I'm tall. I should be. I might even be able to point, as long as I don't fall over. Okay. All right. So what I was pointing at, so you can see, this is the door they come in. So if I said left and I was wrong, that's, but this is the door they come in, registration area. <laughs> this is the office for diamonds. So one bathroom here, one bathroom here. Um, I think coat check is right here, this little hole right in here, bathroom, bathroom. And then... Above that, I am really tall, I can reach this, this is cool. Uh, that's the main door they're gonna enter into the big ballroom. This will be the sensory room, shoe shine, hair and makeup in this area. The red dot right there was what I was pointing at. That will be um, the other section of registration, but also where the, the photographers go to dump their uh, memory cards when they need it. And then everything else is pretty much where it was at. Was that clear? Are we good on that? Okay, any other questions before I sit back down? All right, very cool. Oh, I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. Dan and his uplighting. Okay, there we go. All right, very good. For those of you who haven't seen me since last year, um, <laughs> you might not know the reason I have this is I had spinal surgery four months ago, and God has shown me a little bit more about what it's like to have a disability. This is not permanent, thank the Lord, but uh, yeah. Given me a little bit more, a little bit more patience. Not a lot. My wife will attest to that. Uh, a little bit more patience and a little bit more ability to, to be patient with others. At least I'm not patient with myself, but that's what we've got there. Okay. Am I still ahead of schedule? I'm still ahead of schedule. You will be out of here on time. I promise. Okay. Next is the job list. So these are the different jobs that are available. Um, on the bottom, you'll see in parentheses where you will go after we break out if you want to be on this team. So, first one is the most popular team. Everyone's dying to be on this team. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but we really could use one, maybe two people um, to just be there to help with anyone who may need help in the bathroom. So Jim and Renee, you guys did this last year. Raise your hand in the back there. That's Jim and Renee Niedemeyer. They're fantastic, wonderful people. Um, it's, it's pretty much not... It's not a glamorous job, uh, but it's also not a rigorous, or vigorous job either. There's not a lot to do. Um, maybe once or twice throughout the night, you might need to refill paper towels or something. It's not, not a huge glamorous job. But if you really don't have any other idea what you want to do, or if you just want to kind of stand around and talk for most of the night, um, that's probably the right team for you. So bathroom attendant team, if we had one male and one female, that would be great to be able to go in there. But most of our guests, if they have any issues that they need help in the restroom, their caregivers are there with them and they know what's going on. So you will not be called upon to necessarily wipe anything or, um, yeah, I'll just leave that one there. And or uh, do anything that you're not necessarily 100% comfortable if you're not in the medical field. Yeah, so... I have a filter, mom. Stop making fun of me. All right. Uh, 
let's move on from that one. If, you're, if you want to be on the bathroom attendant team, you will meet in the cry room, which is in the back corner of the church here in the sanctuary. The beauty team. Where's Barb? I saw you walk in. Barb, raise your hand. There's Barb. Barb owns a salon here in Brunswick, and she is wonderful to donate her time and her efforts to this uh, fantastic cause. If you want to be on the beauty team, this is the team that will help with hair and makeup, both pre-prom and at the prom. So Friday, February 9th, Barb has given us some time where she will come uh, to do hair and makeup for anyone who wants to do that. Um, are you doing it at the shop or here at the church this year? What did you decide? At the church. At the church. Okay, perfect. So throughout the day here at the church that day, if you want to be on this team, you don't necessarily have to be here for that, but know that that is an option that we would love um, if you could come and give her a hand, especially if you have any professional experience. You do not want me on this team, but there are people that I'm sure are wonderful for this uh, that could be there for that. So that's an opportunity. If you want to be on that team, you will meet with Barb in the red room. Okay, so... Uh, after this, if you're in any team other than the buddy team, we'll stay here in the sanctuary. Bathroom attendant will be in the back, uh, and parking lot and security will meet in the, um, right behind us in the fellowship area. Everybody else is going down that hall. Um, as you go down that hall, you'll see the youth room will come first. It's the white room on the left-hand side. Then you will keep going. The red room is straight ahead of you. Uh, the green room is to your left, and the yellow and blue room are also a little bit further down the hall, closer to the bathrooms at the back of the church. Um, they're, all tall, they're all called those rooms because the wall that you look at when you enter in the door is that color. Huh? Yeah, we're not too stupid here at the church. So uh, that's the idea behind it. You will find it. So if you find a room that has a red wall, hey, guess what? That's the room you're looking for. All right, moving on. Thank you, Jeff, to the next team, the buddy team. Um, the buddy team is anyone who wants to be a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with our guests throughout the entire night. So... According to the Tim Tebow Foundation, every guest will need a buddy. Some of the guests that are lower functioning um, with dis higher disabilities, they will have their own caregiver as a buddy. Um, but, but we have a large population of higher functioning guests that we will provide buddies for them. Um, so the buddy is in charge of making sure that the guest has the best time possible and does whatever that they want to do. So... Buddies, unfortunately, if you want to be a buddy and you want to ride in the limo all night, but your guest doesn't want to do that, you don't win. I'm sorry to say. The, the guest is the one that wins. We are giving up ourselves for the evening to do what they want to do. Um, so, And this is the only team that has an age restriction. And this is, again, not our rule, but Tim Tio's rule, but they require to be a 16 years old. Uh, to be a buddy or older to do that. So just wanted to let you know that if you were under 16, unfortunately, we are unable to do that at this time. One other thing that I completely forgot to mention that we need to talk about, and we will have little papers for you. Another rule for the Tim Tebow Foundation is that every volunteer over the age of 18 needs to have a background check. Now, the church is willing to cover the cost of that for you. Uh, if you already have one because you work either for a school or another place that you need one, just you can uh, email us a copy or fax us a copy of those. That would be fine. If not, the church will pay for one for you. We have a, a system that we run through, um, but that is a Tim Tebow rule, not ours, uh, so that every volunteer is uh, required to have a background check. If you have not had a background check in the last, uh, what do we say, five years? Is that what we called it, five years? Sure, we're going to call it five. If you haven't had one in the last five years, uh, there, oh, Michelle ran away. Uh, there are page, papers in the back corner over there. Rick, raise your hand real hand. It's behind Rick. Uh, there will be papers to fill out. It's very quick. The church, it's a very small cost that we incur. Uh, if you go to the state, they do it for like 60 bucks. Ours, ours does it for less than that. So, um, so that's perfect. Michelle's coming back. Correct. Hold on one second. I'm going to sneeze. <sighs> Thank you. And I remembered to mute the microphone. Um, so yes, if you were a volunteer last year and you did it last year, you're good. You do not need to do another one. Um, but if you haven't had one for either work or for us for the last few years, Michelle is back there. Now you can wave. Wave, Michelle. Uh, she's the person to see about filling that out and getting a background check. But we are covering the cost of that for you. Going on. Thanks, Jeff, for being there. All right, this is what we're calling the caregiver team. This is the people that will be running the respite room next door. Um, this team will be in charge of that room that's going to be taking place at Faith Walk Church, uh, taking care of the caregivers throughout the night. Um, Sharon, raise your hand. Where are you at, Sharon? Sharon's back in the middle right there, raising her hand. She does a phenomenal job 
Uh, but you will work on this team. <laughs> Have no doubt that you will be doing something while you're there because uh, it's a big team. You've got a lot of people on the team, uh, but there is a lot to do in that group. So um, there's also a little bit more. Most of these teams I can just say, okay, show up on February 9th and you're good to go. Well, the caregiver team is not quite one of those teams. So if you're a hardworking person that wants to be a part of this and again, doesn't know what to, uh, what to do, but you want to be there for people, um, this team will serve food. They will do anything from going out and receiving donations as well uh, for this event. Um, if you're not really cool with that, maybe Sharon will let you slide, but not quite. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, there are a lot of things that can be done for this team because we need a lot of donations and a lot of volunteers for this team. So they will meet in the blue room. That's the one closest to the bathrooms as you get to the back of the church. If you have any questions about what goes on in that room, Sharon is the person to ask. Next is the coat check team. Andrea Nixon, raise your hand. Where are you at? Thank you. Andrea's on there. This is another team that doesn't necessarily need a lot of people. Um, but if you want to be there and do something, but you're thinking, I don't want to be a buddy. I don't want to have to be one-on-one -on -one with somebody all night. That's fine. This is a great team. Um, other than the, the security car people, this is the first people to interact with our guests after, uh, before they go on the red carpet. Oop, I didn't change that this year. Uh, and they will keep track of the coats and the guests. And again, everyone is numbered, so we have a system already. Uh, you will get a copy of that. It's, it's an organizational team where you have to be in charge of that. Or at the end of the night when everyone is racing to get out, your job is to yell and say, who's is this? Which happened last year. So uh, that is also a possibility. So that might be a good one. So that's the coat check team. You will meet in the youth room after, after here, after the breakout. The decorating team. So there's two sides to the decorating team. The first one um, oh, I didn't change the date on that one. <laughs> uh, the team will decorate the facility on Thursday, February 8th of 2018, sorry, um, from 6.30 to 8 p.m. So if you can't necessarily make it on that Friday for the whole time and you want to be volunteer in one way, the decorating team, so again, this is not one that you want me to be a part of other than the fact that I'm tall, uh, but they will put together and make the place look wonderful. Tim Tebow gives us a lot of decorations. We can use some other ones as well. Uh, the colors are almost like this, no, a little darker than this blue, but it's a blue and black and silver are their colors for the night. Um, so they give us balloons and streamers. We put all those up. Diamond Event Center also provides us with great things and we help them with part of the setup on, on the Thursday night from 6.30 to 8. So that's why that team doesn't have to be there at like 2 on Friday afternoon. We're going to do that to, uh, for an hour and a half on Thursday night. The other half is the teardown team. Uh, the teardown team is the best team to be a part of if you can lift heavy things and but you can't be there right at 5 o'clock. Uh, the teardown team does not need to show up until about 9 um, and be a part of that. The goal is, is that the rest of us will be very tired <laughs> and not necessarily want to tear down tables and chairs uh, and things there at the facility. The teardown team does a wonderful job of coming in, being well rested, and uh, helping out with that. Anyone is uh, welcome to stick around and, and be a part of that teardown team if you have a lot of energy. Um, and you want to stick around and be a part of the teardown team, you're more than welcome to. Uh, but what we're also saying is if you've been there all night, you can go home. It's okay. You don't have to tear down and be a part of that. So that's two people, uh, two groups for the decorating team. Uh, the decorating team, the setup will meet in the red room. The teardown, uh, Pastor Dan's supposed to be here right about 4 o'clock, will meet in his office if you have any questions about what to do from there. Moving on. The flower team. We have a wonderful uh, woman who is involved in our GFF ministry on Thursday nights that donates the flowers for the events. And so corsages and boutonnieres, <coughs> excuse me, but she can't physically be there to help everyone do that. Um, so she'll need a hand with helping unloading, laying out the flowers, and pinning them on the guest. Again, not a group that I'm going to be involved in, uh, but this is a great group for people who have those kind of skills uh, that I do not. They will also meet in the red room, which is at the end of the hall, going down there. We've got a lot more of these people, so just put up with me if you will. All right, so the karaoke team. If you love to sing and you love to do karaoke, um, if you could help the guests and the DJ uh, with the karaoke from 5 to 6 on the 9th. Sorry, man, I didn't change any of these dates. Um, that is the date of the prom, and it will be the 9th. So from 5 to 6.15, if you remember from the schedule of the night, will be the time for karaoke. 
we are more than welcome to have people be a part of that team. Last year, we did not have anyone sign up to do karaoke. Now, that may change because we're uh, adding more guests this year, but we didn't have anybody, but we still had people there in case they wanted it. So that's the karaoke team. You will also meet in the youth room if you want to be a part of I'm sorry, I'm going to change that. The karaoke team, you're going to meet here in the sanctuary with me uh, if you want to be a part of that. All right, thanks. Going on next. The medical team. Kristen Toot is not here at the moment, is she? No, I don't see her just yet. Um, we are required to have nurses and EMTs there um, to identify medical situations and to, when, and to understand when to refer a guest to those who are professionally trained to be there as nurses and EMTs. So if you have any medical training and want to be a part of that, the best part of being on the medical team is you can do something else too. Uh, this is part of your, so what we do is we have, um, okay, I didn't talk about this either, sorry. Each, each volunteer, the dress code for what you are to wear on that night. Um, if you are a volunteer on any team, what we're asking for is black pants, white top. You figure it out from there. All right, that's all we're asking. Black pants, white top of some kind. If you are a buddy uh, and you know that your guest will be wearing a specific color and you want to match that, that's fine. That's no one's going to tell you you have to do that. But we are, we, we get pretty snazzy. I'm not going to lie. Uh, it's a pretty good looking group there. Um, it's definitely not just uh, casual. Most of the guests actually look, they're dressed to the nines and they love this. Um, so that's a great thing. So any other volunteer, we're asking for black pants, white top, um, and the medical team will have a special ribbon on them to, to identify who is on the medical team so that in case any situation were to arise, we would know where to look. Now, just so you know, last year we had zero, thank you, Lord, zero medical problems last year. So, yes, let's pray for that too. When we're praying for no snow, pray for no medical problems throughout the night as well. But just so you know it, we want to be ready uh, and just in case, but we didn't have any last year. So that group will meet in the yellow room, also down the hall at the back of the church, um, if Kristen is here. If, if you go down to the yellow room and you're the one sitting there, come on back to the sanctuary and I'll talk to you. <coughs> Excuse me. Next. The paparazzi team. Yes. Terry, raise your hand one more time, just in case anybody didn't know who Terry was. Terry's in charge of the paparazzi team and the photograph team. This, your job is to give the guests the red carpet treatment as they enter in through the building. Uh, and as their name is red, which will be at the beginning of the prom this time, um, and then again when they are crowned as king or queen of the prom. So that's a couple special times that we're going to need the paparazzi team uh, to be high energy, um, and, and you need to have a phone with a camera and a flash. <laughs> that's really it. That's the only requirement. You can borrow a phone from somebody else too. It doesn't have to be yours because, once again, the paparazzi team is almost like they're pretending that they're taking lots of pictures uh, and they don't necessarily have to keep them or use all the memory on your phone. That's the reason I'm saying this, is you don't have to use all the memory on your phone to take pictures to this event. They will meet in the green room, which is the big room on the left-hand side as you go down that hall. Next, the photo team also meeting in the green room. This will be a, a group of people who we are hoping have a little bit of experience in taking pictures and actual good photographs. Um, we are asking you to bring your own camera, uh, whether that's, again, your phone or hopefully you may have a, a nicer f uh, camera to take photographs through. Um, and your job is to just constantly be snapping photos throughout the whole night uh, and then uh, taking those pictures and, again, handing them to our tech people who we will go over that uh, in a little bit. So that's the photograph team also meeting in the green room. Parking lot team, where's Pete? Pete, raise your hand. Yes, Pete is in charge of our parking lot slash security. You're going to see security come up a little bit later. Uh, but the parking lot team will direct the cars as they enter into the parking lot, into the overhang, and then into an open parking space. Um, when you get there, volunteers, that's something else we need to talk about. We are asking that you park. Oh, I'm so sorry. That just fell right off. We ask that the volunteers park as far away from the door as they can. So we leave the spots for our guests that are closest to that, uh, closest to diamonds. Now, parking is one of the things that's not readily available at, in this plaza. Um, the only good thing is, is that the restaurant that's at the end is, is the only thing that's normally open that Friday night. Um, but there's a lot of people we have coming and parking is not great. So if you can park 
off to the side, like in front of the old movie theater. I'm dating myself. How it has, hasn't been the movie theater in what 20 years? Uh, but the old movie theater in Brunswick it used to be in that same parking area. If the volunteers can park over, um, it's Polaris Church still now, right? Do they own that building? Polaris Church still owns. No, I don't know. Anyway, they're over there too. No, that's right. They moved too. I don't know who owns there. So, but you know what I'm talking about, right? The building that's off to the side. Uh, of, of Diamond Event Center. Uh, we'd love for you to park in front of there. But the parking lot team, now, the only requirement for the parking lot team is that you dress warm because it's a Friday and a February in Ohio. So that is, uh, now the great thing is normally that's a pretty big team as well and Pete does a good job of not having the same person be outside for four hours uh, throughout the whole night. You get a chance to come in and warm up and be okay throughout the night. So that is the, you're going to meet in the fellowship area which is the big room right behind the sanctuary here in the church. Jerry, I just want to say yeah. this week for anybody that has a spouse that kind of thinks they might want to be involved but doesn't want to interact, love to have them on my team. All right. Encourage them to come on out and be involved. Yes. Yes, we're not saying, it's not a requirement to be male on this team, uh, but there is a large group of them that if your wife is dragging you to this, this is the team for you. All right. That's, I, hey, I, I don't hold anything back. That's what Pete was trying to say, but he did it in a nicer way than I did. All right. The registration slash volunteer check-in team um, will be there, like we mentioned, at the very beginning when the guest opens the door. Um, the volunteer check-in will be in charge of making sure each person uh, knows where they're going and where they're standing as well. Uh, your job is to warmly greet guests and volunteers, pointing out uh, where they are to go based on what team they're on or what table they are at. Um, so Donna, raise your hand, Donna Cook is in charge of that team. She will be in the red room. Um, and there may be something with this team to do before the prom as well as we put together spreadsheets and, and numbering and putting the guests together with their buddies. Um, but that's not necessarily uh, something that you have to do. But there could be something Donna calls on you if you want to be part of the registration team. Next is the security team that that uh will go hand in hand with the parking lot team pete is in charge of that one as well you'll meet in the fellowship area again to make sure all the guests and caregivers are safe uh, but also not escaping the venue just make sure you read that correctly we do have some people that may want to wander not because they want to get out of there but because they like to explore um, so the security team will be in charge of making sure the exits aren't blocked in case there were an emergency uh, and wheelchairs are able to be moved about. Uh, you're just looking for things that the rest of us aren't looking for to be a part of the security team as well. So you can we'll meet with Pete in the fellowship area in just a few minutes. The Shoe Shine Station team. This is great. Um, this team will be in charge of pampering the male guests. The, the female guests will be pampered by the beauty team. But the male guests will be pampered by the shoe shine station team. Uh, they will be physically shining people's shoes, treating our guests like royalty, making small talk and jokes, and making people feel great. Uh, again, this is not a, doesn't have to be a hugely populated team, uh, but we do need a couple of people who are willing to, to shine people's shoes because this may be the first and only time that one of our guests gets their shoes shined for them. So... Plus, this isn't as popular as it was 50 years ago, so you don't see these around unless you're going into uh, uh, specific buildings that have these in there. All right, let's go on. That, and you'll meet in the red room. Sorry if you didn't see that. The tech and video team. Uh, this, again, doesn't have to be a widely populated team, but this team will coordinate with the DJ and also the photography team to make sure all the technology is working before and during the event. This team will be in charge of videotaping the event and making sure that the video and photographs are uploaded to the Tim Tebow site by Saturday morning, which will be February 10th. I did so bad changing the dates for this. Um, you will meet in this room. This is another typo, not in the youth room. If you want to be on the tech video team, you can meet me. Uh, Brian Coyne will be the head of that team, but he is, um, again, as you all can understand, is not able to make it here today. So that is uh, the tech video team. Do I, what do I have left? Anything else? Or is that the last one, Jeff? That's it. That's it. Okay. Now is the time for open Q&A. Kelly, go right ahead. Yes. Uh, it, I don't know why you didn't get a slide, um, but I mentioned when we talked about the layout. Uh, Jeff, can you pull the layout again one more time? Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, we talked about the sensory room. If you would like to volunteer, that's the bottom right-hand side where the pews are lined up. Um, that's going to be where we hold our sensory room for. I mentioned adults or, or, or some of our guests that just need to 
be out of the room that's loud and bright and strobe lights and things like that. So we have had a couple guests say that they cannot be around strobe lights already that have signed up. So you may have a couple more people this year, Kelly, uh, in your group. If you want to be a part of that team, Kelly, where are you going to meet? You get to pick whatever room you want. Fellowship area, okay? If you want to be a part of that, just to be there for... If you want a little bit more of a calm night, <laughs> a little bit more of a relaxing night, that would be a good team uh, to be a part of. They will meet in the fellowship team area with, uh, with Kelly. Thank you, Kelly, for reminding me about that. I don't know why you didn't reach, why you didn't make the slideshow, because I forgot, that's why. I mean, how much strobe lights is there? Not much. They're really, I mean, we, they have lighting in the place, and they have like disco balls that will bounce it around, but we don't do like rave strobe lighting or anything. But they do have lights that bounce around the, the facility. Good question. Renee, I saw your hand too. Oh, okay. Very good. See, things I don't know. I didn't even know I had this. Yeah. I do believe so. Those were ours, actually. Those are BRCs, so we will bring those as well, but they were our guests that we knew needed them. Um, yeah, so we have, we have two that are available from the church for that night. Um, our, our donations team might want to talk to Diamonds about seeing if they can get a couple more, if we can find a couple more. Yeah, Kim. Fantastic. There's three. Thanks, Kim. Anybody else have any questions at all about the, the night? Did you maybe, if you didn't know what team you wanted to join, do you want to see the list again or anybody? Yeah, Courtney. I just have a quick question. Sure. As far as like if you're doing like a before or after the main event, you said something about participating at the main event. Yeah. Like, why would you participate in the main event if you're not going to participate in the main event? Correct. How would you know which room to go to? Both. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's a really good question. I just try to go both, hit both team leaders up. Uh, team leaders will have sign-up sheets. They will look like these. Kristen, this is yours. Uh, so <laughs> for the medical team, and pens will be around. Kristen, you're in the yellow room for the medical team, if you have any questions about that, if you missed that section. Buddies are in here. I've got the sign-ups. If there are no further questions, you're more than welcome to break out into your different rooms of the church where you're going to be. Pick a team to be on. If you want to hop around and find out a little bit more about the individual teams, you're welcome to do that too. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Oh, we're going to pray now? Okay, let's pray. All right, let me do that. That's a great idea. Look at that. That's why we have wonderful people here. I'm sorry. Let's, let's be quiet for just a couple seconds. I'm going to say a quick prayer, and then we'll break for the evening. That's right. I forgot we're not coming back together. So that's the other announcement is once you are done with your breakout session with your team, when your team leader says you are free to go for today, thank you for being here. Um, again, if you have anybody else that you know of that might want to volunteer for this, they can email me. This is the easiest one. I'm pretty big, so my email is bigjcarroll at gmail.com. All right? You can find that on our website here at the church. If you know someone who wants to register for the prom they go to our website, www.b-r-c.info. If you Google Brunswick Reformed Church, that will come up uh, also. So if you know someone who wants to register for the event itself to be a guest, that is where they need to go for that. But if you know someone who wants to volunteer, they can email me, to, and, and I will shoot them the link since we're taping this. They can watch this, and they can tell me what team they want to be a part of. Guests are 16 and older also. Yes, thank you. Kim, one more thing before I pray. Your email address is just J-A-Y. Correct, J-A-Y-S. We spell out my actual name is J-A-Y, not just the letter J. Thank you for that. If any of you need any of those, I have business cards in my office as well. Tracy first and then, I'm sorry. I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry, 14. That's right. It's 16 to be a buddy, 14 to attend. Thank you, Tracy. 16 to be a buddy, 14 to attend the event. Sorry. I'm glad, I'm glad you asked because I, I, I absolutely shot out of my brain. Yes? Uh, when do we, I know that we're breaking out in groups and we can do the background um, You can grab that on your way to break out into groups. They're in the back. Uh, Michelle will have the background checks for you in the back. All right, let me pray for us and pray for the night again. Lord, we, we, we are here because we want to help. 
We are here because we want to make 125 people feel special and loved. But ultimately, Lord, whether we know it or not, we're here for you. Uh, bless this evening, Lord. Bless all the little details that have to come together uh, to make it work. Bless each person that's coming. Uh, give each volunteer the strength and energy they need to do what they need to do throughout the entire night and allow them to be blessed as well. Lord, that is why this night is one of my favorite nights, is not only that we get to be a blessing to others, but I was amazingly blessed with love and compassion and laughter and smiles that night more than any other night of the year. So we thank you and praise you for what you've done for us, what you've done for our guests, and what you will continue to do for each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody, once more. If you have any questions, you can come talk to me as well. But uh, if not, you can break out into your different groups. <laughs>